Okay, we're going to be reading the passage, An Accidental Toy. This is for 5th uh, grade, Star Released. Um, remember, as you're reading, um, try to get the main idea. Underline keywords. You can uh, draw pictures at the margin. Um, find words in the dictionary if you need to, to, to clarify the meaning. And... Enjoy. Enjoy the passage. An accidental toy. This is a title. Uh, I think this is going to be a kind of informational. Let's see. This is a subtitle. What have we here? Uh, I have a photo. And it says, Wright's invention can take the ink of a newspaper. This is the caption. It's showing me this. So this paragraph should be talking about this. Wright's invention. So it's an invention that it was an accident and it became a toy. So let's read it. An invention can be valued because it solves a problem or fills a need. And sometimes an invention can serve a purpose for which it was not intended. One such accidental invention resulted in a squishy, bouncy toy that millions of people enjoy playing with every day. What have we here? What have we here? It's a question. Let's see. James Wright was an engineer working in the General Electric Laboratories in New Haven, Connecticut in the 1940s. Information that's important. 1940. James Wright. Okay. Uh, the United States uh, faced a shortage of natural rubber. So the U.S. government asked GE and other companies to develop artificial rubber for military uses. Artificial rubber for military uses. That was the purpose. One day at work, Wright added boric acid to silicon oil. The combination produced an interesting goo. The material bounced higher, higher than rubber and was more stretchable. And the gooey, I'm sorry, the gooey stretchy material will even take an imprint of ink images it was pressed on. So I can say that it was uh, it was bouncy, and I was right. They are talking about this uh, photo here. So I know that they're going to ask me for the best summary. They're going to ask me for vocabulary words, and they're going to ask me for main idea for certain passages. Um, and they're going to ask me about text features, so I need to keep that in mind as I read. Number three, but the government wasn't interested in Wright's invention. Artificial rubber that could be used for tires was already being made in other laboratories, so the Wright's putty had interesting features. Nobody could find any practical way to use it. So it was, the, it was a problem. He found something that they did not have a use for. Stretching into success. This is another subtitle. So this section is going to talk about how it was actually beneficial. And it was a, a big success. It says, silly putty stretches when it is pulled. And you have a photo to show you that. Perhaps the putty would have been just a local wonder if it weren't for a man named Peter Okay, this man, I need to underline the, the name, Peter Hudson, who had experience in advertising. You know what advertising is? All the commercials, all the ads. Okay. Hudson learned about the party and had an idea. He knew that marketing and advertising were very important in making a product popular. That's the reason why we have ads. If Hudson could get the word out by advertising the party, it could be a huge success. Hudson bought the rights to make the party, which he named Silly Party. So he bought it. He bought the idea and he changed the name. He sold it in a catalog and in a few stores and then began to advertise it nationwide. The silly putty was mentioned in the New York New Yorker magazine. Within three days, Hudson received 250,000 orders for silly putty. This once rejected lab experiment had become a widely popular toy. This is why this section is titled Success. 
because it became very popular. Hudson packed the party in plastic eggs and it is still sold that way. Silly Putty was one of the best-selling toys in the 1950s and it remains very popular with children today. Since 1950, more than 300 million Silly Putty eggs have been sold. Wow! Not just a toy. So this section is going to tell me about other uses. As Silly Putty became more common in households, people took notice of its unique properties. They're going to ask me for this word. It is pliable when pressed slowly, but stiffens when pressure is applied quickly. So it can be squished by hand, but it remains in a ball when bounced off the floor. People notice that things stick to the soft putty. For example, a ball of the putty rolled along a piece of clothing can remove pet hair. That's one use, it can remove pet hair. And a small piece of putty pressed between the keys of a computer keyboard can pick up dust and lint, so it's used to clean up. And silly putty can be used to help balance a wooby table <laughs> if it's placed under one of the table legs. So they were finding other uses for it. Then you have another photo. They were talking about this in the other, in the previous paragraph. It says silly putty can be used to clean a computer keyboard. There you go. Because silly putty is soft and smooth, some people have found that squeezing it can help reduce stress. So that's another use. Or focus the mind on a task. Squeezing the putty keeps the hand muscle active, mm, like for therapy, and uses excess energy. Silly. Uh, party can also be used in physical therapy for people who have hand, hand injuries. The party offers resistance when squeezed to help people strengthen their muscles. So for therapy, that is one other, another use. So you have clean, different surfaces, therapy, and stress relief and things like that. Uses for silly party continue to be found some 70 years after its invention. In fact, astronauts oh, astronauts on space missions have used silly party to hold their instruments in place in zero gravity, showing that the choice potential is truly really out of this world. So, astronauts uh, and more to come. That's what they say. Okay, let's go to the questions. Question 32. The author's main purpose in writing this selection is to, and I know the purpose is pie, pursue, oh, I thought I had my, my marker. So you have pursue, and you have inform, you have entertain. It has to be something, somewhere around those. It's just, and before I read my questions, my, my questions, before I read my choices, I need to think about the article. So it's informative. It has to be something along the lines of those two. F, encourage the reader to think of clever uses for a product. Is he encouraging me and persuading me? No, because he uh, gave me, the author gave me information about the the original person who invented it and how it was invented and then he, how it was marketed and how successful it was how many units were sold so no g inform the reader about the invention and uses of an interesting product inform the reader okay that could be it it's not very specific but because it says interesting product but let's let's see it, that sounds good. Let's see the other one. Describe some creative ways of promoting a new product. This is totally wrong. They didn't tell me ideas of what to do if I have a product that I want everybody to know about. It's not about it. Explain how to develop an invention. Totally wrong. They're not telling me, the, okay, if you have an invention, this is all the steps that you have to follow. None of that. So I think I have found my answer. It is letter G. 33. From the information presented in paragraph 2, the reader can conclude that Wright's invention, I need to go back and find my paragraph 2. 
My paragraph two says um, the name of the engineer. Uh, James Wright was an engineer working in the General Electric Laboratories in New Haven, Connecticut in the 1940s. The United States faced a shortage of natural rubber, so the U.S. government asked GE and other companies to develop artificial rubber for military uses. One day at work, Wright added boric acid to silicon oil, and the combination produced an interesting goo. So it was, it, this is how, how it was, um, this is the how, this is a letter H, how. Okay, now that I have an answer in my head, a possible answer, and I have summarized this paragraph, I can think about, it says, what can you conclude about his invention? That it costs uh, more to make than the government was willing to pay did they mention that hmm no it's not about that conclude that required chemicals that were difficult to get that the invention required chemicals difficult to get no that the invention display characteristics that he did not expect actually that could be it because he was trying to create artificial rubber but then he found out that that combination he made made something special that it was bouncy but it was stretchable and it could take the ink out of paper so he did not expect it the invention was the reason he was offered the job was he offered the job? No. I got my answer right here. There you go. Okay. The next question says, which of these statements best summarizes a section titled Stretching into Success? And I'm just going to take a look. I remember, but I'm just going to take a look about a Stretching into Success, which, which is the yellow portion right here. So it says how... The, this person, Peter Hudson, um, was very good at advertising and he knew how to make uh, p things popular. He bought the rights for the party. He renamed it Silly Party and he advertised it nationwide and lots, sold lots, lots of um, Silly Party eggs. That is a stretching into success. Now that I re have read it, I can see my choices. All right, and the choices are when Peter Hudson purchased the rights to make. Remember, we're looking for summary, okay? Just that's a, that part of the story of the article. When Peter Hudson purchased the rights to make the party, he decided to call it Silly Party. Yes, it's true, but it's not the whole information. The most important thing is that. It must contain this idea. That's why the selection that uh, section is titled "Stretching into Success." It was not just that he decided to name or change the name of it. It it was actually that he made it successful. Let's see letter G. Peter Hudson learned of an invention, name it "Silly Party," and use his experience to successfully advertise it. All of this sounds perfect. Let me read the other one. Peter Hudson realized that children around the country would like the party if he came up with a good name for it. Still, that could have been true, but it's not the whole select section. To help make James Wright's invention popular, Peter Hudson wanted to give more people the opportunity to know about it. Yes, but it was not it is not how it's uh, summarized. So my keyword was success. So I have who? Peter Hudson. Did what? Name, bought the rights, name it Silly Party, and use its experience to advertise it, advertise it successfully. So this is my correct answer. Question 35. Based on the ideas presented in the selection, what can the reader conclude about Silly Party? Okay, I need a conclusion. I'm going to under underline that word. What do they want me? What are, what are they asking? 
they want a conclusion from me. What can I think about it? A. It is used today by more adult, adults than children. There is no information that will give me this idea. Mm -mm, no. B. Copying ink images is the most valuable, valuable of its uses. No. Actually, at the end, it says that there are many more uses that we don't even know about. We haven't discovered them yet. yet. C. For about 70 years, it has been the most popular toy in the market. This could be um, the idea because it says that it's, con it's still selling a lot. There are more uh, uses for it that we haven't discovered just yet. And it's still successful. It has gained, letter D, it has gained new uses over the years. This is true as well. It does, it has. Okay. It has been new uses over the years. So this, sometimes this will happen to you. You will find out the two that are totally wrong. And then you have the distractor and the right answer. So you have to read them again and think about the best choice. What would be the best conclusion about Silly Potty? For about 70 years, it has been the most popular toy on the market. Okay, this is a keyword, most popular. Is it the most popular? What about all the toys that you have at home or all the your most wanted toys or what kids ask for Christmas? I don't think they ask for Silly Potty. It has gained new uses over the years? It has. Okay. So I think my best choice is... It's letter D. This one right here. It has gained new uses over the years. I cannot say that it, it's been... Or, you know, it, it, it is still one of the best toys or best sold toys in the market i can say that i can't conclude that but about the uses yes i can 36 what is the meaning of the word properties in paragraph six okay the strategy is go find on par in paragraph six go find the sentence that has the word properties and you have to write it down in the space that is provided for you to do so. Then you're gonna do plug it in. That's the strategy. If you do this, you will always get it right. Of course, you can also use your dictionary, but let's find the word first. Okay, I have uh, pulled up the, the paragraph and it says people took notice of, of its unique properties. Its unique properties. Okay, the, what are the, the properties? It is pliable, uh, it stiffens, it can be squished, it can bounce. So those are the properties. Okay, so I can say, it's. let's plug it in. The strategy is called plug it in. Okay, it's unique creators. No, it's unique solutions. No, it doesn't provide solutions. It's unique qualities. Yes, this one sounds good. It's unique customers. No. So I have the distractor and the correct answer. It's unique solutions. It doesn't provide solutions. It's saying in the paragraph right here, it's talking about all the things that the silly party can do. It can be squished and it bounces and it could be, you know, uh, many things it's, it's over there so I have solutions and qualities it's unique solutions no qualities is the right answer okay if you do this you will get it right every time and 37 what can the reader conclude about Peter Hogson based on the information in the selection Peter was a man that actually made it um, successful it was an invention that didn't they didn't know what to do with it they created something and he didn't know what to do with it but then peter 
uh, so like potential like oh this this can be actually a nice toy so what can we conclude about Peter what kind of person is Peter okay let's see he purchased several toys from different companies we don't know about that I don't think that was his business his business was advertising he created ads so no he didn't purchase toys from many different companies he saw the possibilities for something that others didn't know he saw the possibilities this could be it nobody told, told him, uh, him hey you need to purchase this the rights for this thing that we don't know what it is because we believe that it's going to be super famous nobody believed it was going to be successful or that it could be useful they didn't know what to do with it but he saw that potential and the potential means the possibilities see he searched for new inver inventions by reading magazines the the party wasn't on a magazine no it was not there. When when something appears in a magazine, it's already been successful or on its way to become so. No. D. He believed that mistakes often lead to important discoveries. That could be, but not necessarily. It doesn't apply here because um, he didn't think it was a mistake to be, to to begin with. Uh, it was not a mistake. It was created by experimenting but it was not like a mistake they didn't make a mistake so uh the correct answer will be letter b he saw the possibilities he saw something and then he went for it he saw all the possibilities and potential for this little uh silly party Okay, the next one. The author presents the ideas in paragraphs through two, two through five in chronological order. If you remember, there's um, one of the four or five kinds of organization, text organization, so that the reader will better understand. There is no way I can answer that if I don't go back and refresh my memory about paragraphs two through five. So let me find paragraphs two through five. No, this is not it. Mm, let me move this to the side through to five it's this this one right here it's stretching into success and what what have we here before i read my choices i am going to summarize it in my head so i can have an idea this section right here what have we here is about the person mr wright creating something that he didn't know how to use uh, that the invention uh, the, the government didn't want to finance the invention because they didn't know what to do with it but then one man with vision uh, who was an expert in advertising used his expertise and, and purchased a party changed it changed the name and made it very famous and popular okay that's it and let's see now that I have an idea, I can actually read my choices here. F. How a failed invention became popular when it was giving a new purpose. That could be it, but I'm going to keep reading. How an engineer mixed different chemicals to produce an invention. No, because it's just the first part of it. This is incorrect. The process an engineer followed to invent a product for the government. No, because you're missing the second part. The second part, that is paragraphs four and five, about how it was very successful. It's, you're missing that. So, no. Okay? The best way to market an invention as a toy? No, they didn't explain us how to do this. Okay, so the best answer remember maybe it's not what you were thinking but it has to be the best choice the best choice is letter f i'm going to use my red how a failed invention became popular and that covers paragraphs two through five in the chronological order 
39. Wright's invention was originally intended for, and this is a very, very easy question, because he was creating something for the astronauts? No. Physical therapy? No. For the children? No. He was creating something for military use. They were asked to create a different kind of rubber, and that's how the invention was born.